Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burris here. Got a little uh, Superman Van Gogh style going on here. And we've done some really great videos here on the Holiness Sanctification page. It's really about living out your salvation. It's not a one-time event. Soteria, which is translated salvation, is actually a process of restoration Mending back together, it's a sewing term, mending back together a, sew, a, a, a torn piece of cloth. Mending it back in many ways, not just reconciliation, peace with God. That's really important. We were enemies of God, but God loved us while we were still enemies, right? That's pretty intense. Think about that. So reconciliation being uh, having peace with God after being an enemy with God. But it also refers to uh, restoration of wholeness, of health, and really restoring the original intent of creation. That's what Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, to give super abundant life, John 10.10. 10. So we're going to pull on a string. Go look at all that we have pulled on. I mean, Revelation right during the pulling off of the string. And we're just going to be asking, seeking, and knocking in this video. As we have been, there's no plans here. There's no pre-plans. So I'm, I'm just bringing up some tools that we'll use as things come in. Bible Gateway is a really good tool. And I go to a standard for doctrinal uh, understanding doctrinal issues it's English Standard Version it doesn't have a lot of flowery words it's very formal equivalence so it's used in a lot of uh, universities but I'm also going to bring up uh, BibleHub.com and the interlinear so you can just hit that button called interlinear and that'll get us looking at the original Greek and Hebrew but I also like to use a Bible tool called Classic Version of the Net Bible. So I just type in classic.net.bible. It's an organization. And this is very powerful. It has a lot of great notes, a lot of scholarship notes. And it really allows you to click on grammar and understand the Greek grammar under a word. Because words are not just dictionary definitions. There might be several definitions of a Greek word, and the context, you have to read the context to decide which one is legit. And then the morphology, the, the way it functions in the sentence, is very, very important, okay? So that uh, Classic Net Bible allows you to see that. Look at the link Bible Hub that I'll put below in the description, right? I'll put that below. So you can use those tools, okay? And let's look at something that's... Lord, I just ask you to guide us. Pretty thirsty. Jesus said, if you're thirsty, come to me. So, Lord, just guide us now by your Holy Spirit is the one teacher. One is your teacher. You said, Matthew 23, 8. He will teach us all things, lead us all into all truth. It's your spirit, you said, that uh, you were going to give them and to be in them and to dwell in his disciples. And we get that spirit when we're water baptized, when we come to you uh, by faith. Jesus is Lord. We confess that. That's our confession of the faith, that you are Lord, Curios the supreme master and ruler and owner of us. And that's what we want to know right now. You've shown us so much about how to walk in holiness and how to walk in a pure way. How to walk pure and how to say no to sin. What is the, the way to do that? You've, you've already shown us so much. Is there... Is there anything else that you want to show us on how to walk in holiness? How to walk to make you Lord? 
how to walk successfully. Well, okay, all right. So I just look for words to come in my mind. I trust, you know, that if I just am asking, seeking, and knocking, all those words, uh, by the way, are present, ongoing, and, and sometimes they use present participle, which means as a habit or a lifestyle, that he, we can, we ask in faith. We ask trusting and depending and relying. That's the Greek word pistis. You know, the Bible was not written in English. <laughs> I, I know you're shocked. And it's not written in 900 English Bibles that all say something different. If you don't think they all say something different, read Bible Gateway and just click on a passage and then look at 55 versions and oh my gosh, they all say something different. And I mean, it affects you doctrinally. It affects the way you think about God. Man, it really affects the way you think about God. I've heard so many crazy things from Christians. I heard something the other day. Oh my gosh, I just, this guy, this brother was, oh, I just felt so sad that he believed this. That he, he, he believed, oh, you know, he's got a sprained ankle and he's complaining about it. He might not. He says, I might not ever walk again. I might not ever get a, be able to get a job again. And I just accept it. it. I just accept it. I have peace. I have peace about this. And I went, Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. You're talking about a work of the devil, and you want to make peace with the work of the devil? You've got to be kidding me. You should be rebuking that. You should be driving the demons out of that situation, out of that injury, driving them out of there. You know, people who have had their eyes open have seen demons on every single human being, like leeches, just sucking life. They, you know, the devil comes to steal. He comes to take it away from you, man. And he comes to destroy it, corrupt it, pollute it. It's all the same words. You know, if he can't take it away from you, he just wants to ruin what you got. And then if he can't do one of those two things... He really wants to just kill you, man. Permanently put you out of business. This is his agenda. But John 10.10, 10, right after that, right after that, Jesus said, But I came to give them genuine life. This is why I came. I came to destroy the works of the devil. Not to, for you to make peace with them. You're supposed to take authority. You're supposed to use your authority of Jesus Christ's name. Go look at the healing page. I hope he wakes up. I, I gave him the riot act. I said, you are complying. You're not saying thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's what you, the Lord's prayer is. If the kingdom of God is not for you to lay around and grope and then not be able to get a job because you got a sprained ankle and you're accepting, you're, you're saying, well, I guess I'll just, oh, I'll have to go on disability. Give me a break. Your whole life was ruined. You're out on the streets. Literally, he's out on the streets. Because he says, I can't get a job with this, this ankle. And I just have to make peace with this. I said, give me a break. You should be fighting tooth and nail against Satan. You should be fighting him in Jesus' name, using his name. He says, in my name you drive out demons. In my name you heal the sick. Well, if you're sick or you've got a problem, you should be healing yourself. Put the hands on it, take the Lord's Supper. Your right, healing is in the Lord's Supper. I have seen that time and time again. Go look at the praying medic. Go look at the praying medic. Anyway, got off there. So, Lord, I just, I call for healing of that ankle in the name of Jesus. Healing. And those demons have to get out of his life because those demons have ruined his life. He's come up with every excuse to be on the street. In the name of Jesus, Break that, break that captivity, break those and cancel those assignments of those demons, those demon lawyers that are coming against him in the courts of God. We cancel that in the name of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus will cover him and protect him and create a hedge around him so that no demons can come into him and confuse him and deceive him. Half-truths, lies of the devil, deception, keeping him prison, imprisoned. You know, it says in the New Testament, it says, I pray that you will prosper in your health and in all things, all things that you shall prosper, even as with your health. Yeah, that's the, 
Yeah, where does it say that? Okay, let's go look at that. Prosper. Just type that in Bible Gateway. I think it's down in Jude or something like that. Connect on the first on the New Testament. And I did not find it. So sometimes I open a a link in uh, DuckDuckGo. Much safer way to surf than Google. Google steals your data and sells it, your information. That's what they do. If you go listen to um, or go look to the website, um, Kim Commando. Kim Commando, she's the digital goddess they call. It's kind of funny. So um, I'm just going to say in DuckDuckGo, verse on uh, prosper in all things. All right. Sometimes I can't find it right off the bat. And there's a, I just want to find the one prosper in health. And I'll just put that. Yes, 3 John 1 2. 3 John 1 2. So I just go over to 3 John. One, verse two. Beloved, I pray that you that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health, as it goes well with your soul. And we can look at what that word "well" means in Bible Hub. Third John, one two. Bible Hub, beloved. Concerning all things, well, sounds like, like to me all things. <laughs> I pray, Eukamai, means to request, to prosper and to be in good health just as your soul prospers. Wow. What's the word prosper mean? Well, the Bible wasn't written in English. It's the Greek word, you, you are do. You, you are do. You are do. Means to have a prosperous journey, a happy and successful journey, to a, a journey on a particular road, in well or good is the you prefix, properly to go on a prosperous journey, to be on the right or profitable path, leading to real success and good fortune, where someone truly prospers, is prospered. So, that's what it means. Now, I don't think this guy was prospering. Nope. And he had every excuse, and he was allowing the works of the devil that Jesus came to destroy, he was saying, oh, I'm at peace with God about this. What? You should be like, like Daniel, I said. You, you should be like Daniel, praying three times a day until Gabriel comes through the ranks of the demons, that the war that's going on out there, and makes it through and accomplishes your prayer. He says, we heard you the first time, but it's taken three weeks, and this was a prophet of God. I said to my friend, I said, what do you think? If it took three weeks for a prophet of God, well, you might have to pray, pray more than three weeks. But he prayed three times a day. And that warfare, that gave power to the, to the angels of God. It talks about that. Our prayers give power to the angels of God. It encourages them. It strengthens them. It rises before the throne of God. Our persistence. I don't know how. Go look at the prayer tab. There is so much written about persistence in prayer. you got to fight the good fight. You don't throw a flag up. You don't roll over and surrender. No. you got to call for Gabriel, Michael, the archangels. you got to ask God for his powerful army of angels army host of angels 
to get on your case, to defeat the demons that are plaguing you. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Deliver us, he says, from the evil one. The first part is not lead us into temptation. Terrible translation. It means do not lead us into a testing, a trial, a tribulation that is intended to find out what we're made out of. We don't need that. We need a hedge of protection. And so he associates, but instead deliver us from the evil, singular, implying the evil one. You know, Satan is the god of this world, little g. The prince and power of the air. I mean, he's controlling the atmosphere, the weather. Not God. These are not acts of God, bolts of lightning that kill people on the golf course. That's not God. Give me a break. Your house getting hit by a tree limb, and it destroys your house and your livelihood, and you're out on the streets. Give me a break. This is not God. The insurance companies call it an act of God. It's not an act of God. It's little G-O-D, the God of this world, Jesus said. He is the prince and power of the air, the heavens. You know, it's the lower heavens. He's not the prince and power of the court of God, I'll tell you that. You know, so he got kicked out of the court of God. Jesus said, I saw him fall. I saw him fall. And he was judged. He was kicked out of heaven. He was kicked out of heaven. He took a third of the angels, and they were, rebelled against God, and they were kicked out of heaven. Woohoo! And God is going to clean up this mess. So, whew, how did I get off that? So, holiness. we got to fight the good fight. Where does it say that? Fight. Fight! This is no walk, you know, sitting down on the job. Oh, poor is me. Life just sucks. Well, I do this too. And I think the Lord is telling us right now, you got to fight. You got to fight. How do we know it's a fight? Let's see what the fight. There's a lot of verses about fight. And he says, um, let's see. Fight the good fight of the faith, the Christian faith. Take hold of the eternal life. Yeah, you got to take a hold of genuine life. You can't just sit there and go, oh, well, I guess it is it's just, you know, it just is what it is. I have to make peace with it. No, you have to take hold of it. You have to grab a hold of it. It literally means grab a hold of for yourself. To which you were called. See, you were called to do this. You know, we weren't called to just roll over and play dead. Oh, I guess this is the way it is, you know. I guess we just have to roll over and play dead. Well, you know, we don't know if it was really, you know, stolen. So, you know, whatever. I, you know, I guess we'll just roll over and play dead. You know, I'm not saying one other, one way or another. But the fact that we, we don't even fight the good fight of faith, trust and relying and depending on the Lord Jesus for righteousness and truth and his kingdom to come. That doesn't mean allowing all this fraud and all this lies and deceit coming against us and just rolling over and say, well, we got to move forward. I guess we just, what, what, moving forward to what? You just allowed the steamroller to run right over you. What do you got left? You're flat as a pancake. And, and here are the guys out on the streets. So it's all the same, do you see? It's all the same. I and, and Paul wants to say, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And Paul doesn't lay around, you know, and, and watch TV and look at the Internet and just waste time. I have kept the faith. And uh, let's see what else he says. Who is the beast? Okay. So we got that. Let's look at the word contend. That just came into my mind. Where did that come from? I believe the Holy Spirit. New Testament is the New Covenant. It shines light. The Old Testament is but shadows, it says. But shadows. Shadows of things to come. The reality is in Jesus Christ. He says, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about our common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend 
for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Now, that's Jude 1 3. You know, Jude was one of the brothers of Jesus, I believe, one of the half brothers, came to faith. And let's see what that word contend means. I don't think it means to just look the other way when trouble comes. It's the word, it's a very long word, epogonazomai. Oh, wow, that's a word. It means, epi means to focus on, epi. Uh, agon, agon means a contest or competition. So it properly means to contend, literally, to struggle upon, appropriately, with skill and commitment in opposing whatever is not of faith. God's, whatever is not of faith. It really just means to contest, to focus on, to contend earnestly for. All right. So he says, you should be contending earnestly. You should be, you should be continuing, contending earnestly for the faith that was once and for all delivered to the saints. Yeah. There's the faith is the faith. It's the faith. Right? It's not just any old faith in something. It's not just trusting in anything. It's the Christian faith, the faith in Christ. So that sounds to me pretty serious. And, you know, the archangel Michael contending with the devil. Right? In Jude 1.9. So, you know... I think we're supposed to contend. Wow. I think we're, we're supposed to fight. We're supposed to fight back. 